All right, welcome back. So in my last video, I showed you how I basically connected my wonderful little view controller here to my actual code um, in my last video. So that's where I've kind of stopped. But in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go ahead and add the game logic that I created in my unit testing video with Playground. So you'll see how I created my tests and my code and playground. And now in this video, you'll see how I attach it all. But there is a little bit of house cleaning that I need to do to that code to bring it in. And also I need to add another method. So um, if you have any questions, you will see a little pop-up um, of all the prior videos that will lead up to this one in case you have any questions. So let's go ahead and pause on this one and let's go back to my wonderful little game logic. So in the unit testing with playground video, what I did was I created my tests in playground along with my code based off of this fun little fizzbuzz kata that I found. And it works just fine, but the thing is, is I need to add a couple of things to make this kind of work in my game. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and generate a list of numbers. So I'm gonna create an array of numbers. And I want this to be, be capable of changing the range based on the level, basically. So I need to create some kind of generic code that will accept a particular range, doesn't matter if it's really simple range or a really large range, and have it output that list of numbers with ones that are divisible by three, five, and seven, or all three. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I basically left off where I started from my last video on this. And now it's just time to add something new. So this is kind of how to add more functionality to your class. Okay, enough talking. <laughs> so the first thing I want to make sure that I can do is I want to make sure I can submit a range to my logic. So let's go ahead and just write out that. So test um, should receive range. Okay, and what I want to do, of course, is call my system under test. So I'm going to create a just a, co um, <clears throat> a constant game and do SCT and then range. Now I should get an error because range does not exist. <laughs> which is correct. So let's go ahead and add range on this side. So this is my, my class that I've created. So I've got to make it public just for playground range. And there is a class native to Swift called range. <laughs> and range is basically a half open interval with uh, a lower bound and a, an upper bound. So in this case, I'm just going to just do a default one just so I don't have to initialize anything. And I will just do something really simple. This will basically return, a, it's basically zero. <laughs> because obviously three is not divisible, well one is not divisible by like three, five, or seven. Um, so I expect to actually have something already set up to replace in here. That's just kind of a, you know, a, a setup. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and wait for it to figure out that I've done what I need to do. Maybe if I hit save, let's go ahead and run it. Let's see if that will remove the error if I run it. Okay, there's no errors, which is great. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that and try it again. And there it is. So it does appear. <laughs> All right, so I have my test that I've created before. It's just fine, so that's awesome. Okay, so we have a little error here, and that's because we haven't used our 
constant name yet, but we will. And so I'm gonna create just a very basic range and have that equal to one and up to 30. I put 31 because it doesn't count 31, just goes to 30. It'll exclude 31. And I'm gonna set my game range to my range here. And let's go ahead and say XCT assert equal <clears throat> that game range. Oopsie is equal to the range that I set in my test. Let's go ahead and create a little message. So game should accept a range. Here's range up here. And go ahead and save and run. All right, I have some problems here. Oopsie, I'm supposed to do a CT. And that should fix it. There we go, no failures, that's awesome. All right, so we have a range. And then the next thing I need to make sure is that when I do set a range that I actually get something back from it. So let's go ahead and create another test and this test will be um, that so game numbers should return array all right so let's go ahead and start figuring out if this happens so we're going to do um, a let range equals system or test dot range and we're going to set a range to something a little bit smaller so it's um, a little bit easier to handle. So basically one through five, I do six because exclude six. And then I'm gonna set my game. So ST, uh, system or test range to the range that I set up here. And let's ask it, ask it that, um, it is not null. So let's do assert not null. Game filtered range for applicable numbers. Let's go ahead and set our little message should return an array. We should get an error here at some point. Okay, great. <laughs> Eventually, Playground will realize there's something wrong. Okay. Oopsie. I made a mistake there. Okay, that should fix that. And now it says can assign. Let's go ahead and build. Oops, we can't because we've got another error here. What's this say? Oh, game, did you mean name? No, actually, I meant system under test. That's what I meant. And save that. And then system under test will say, oh my god, but I don't have filter range for applicable numbers. So Let's go ahead and add that. So what that is, is I'm basically creating another method or another function, and I'm gonna need to name it filter range for applicable 
whole numbers. And it's not going to accept any parameters because it's within the scope of this class. So I'm going to basically just do work off of the range here. So if I hit uh, save and save and we run, let's see what happens. Oh, I forgot what I needed to do in order to return a null is it actually needs to return a list of integers or an array of integers. So let's go ahead and do a return. And we're just going to do an empty array. We're actually going to just return nil. You know, an empty array. Let's go ahead and do not equal. And let's do a count on what comes back. And that count should not be zero. And save, save, and let's stop and play again. All right, so we do have a, a failure um, because it did return an empty array, and that's what I expected because I haven't done anything with my method over here for filtering array. All right, so the first thing I need to do is I need to do some work on the range that comes in because that's going to help me determine the numbers that I am going to use for my code. So. Let's go ahead and create a constant here. So I'm gonna just do let um, numbers equals the range, and I'm going to map. What is map? It basically returns an array containing the results of mapping the given closure over the sequence's elements. In this case, the sequence is the range. So I'm gonna map that, and the closure, of course, in curly brackets, I'm gonna use the shorthand argument zero. And if you're not sure about what this is, there's plenty of videos. I think I, I'm pretty sure I have a video on this and I don't believe it's changed for Swift at all. Um, I think it's like maybe Swift.2 or something like that, but basically this <laughs> is still applicable. All right, so I'm gonna use shorthand and basically what this shorthand means is that every number that is contained in this range will be mapped into an array. So if it's zero to 10, or sorry, zero to 11, is gonna be one, two, three, all the way to 10. Um, if it's 20 to 31, it's gonna be from 20 to 30. So um, it's just gonna bring all the numbers in from this range. Um, and then what I need to do is that I need to uh, filter out Actually, let's just submit the numbers, right? Because that's, I think that would actually satisfy my, my test, actually, now that I think about it. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's save, and let's run. All right, so it did pass my test, so return something back. <laughs> which is expected. So the map did actually transform all the numbers from the range into an array. Join me next time where I finish up the last couple tests for the game logic, and then I will transfer this over to my project. Again, if you want to be notified, you have to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. If you want to see my code, all the code here, in one place, sign up for my email list and I will add you to my project so you can take a look at the code. All right, till next time.